buttered. There's two or three different kinds of ways that you can make a butter for your scones or pastries or anything. I'm just choosing scones today, but you can use whatever your bakery has. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna make is the ricotta cheese sauce for our granola. Now, breakfast for me has got to be quick. It's got to be ready to just put together boom, boom, and be done with it so that we can eat and get on the way because mornings are very harried and very rushed. So you could make this sauce the night before if you wanted to. And the first thing you need to do is get some ricotta cheese. Now, ricotta I bet you've had it and you just don't know it. If you've ever had Italian food, you have had ricotta. Cannolis are stuffed oftentimes with a ricotta cheese mixture. Lasagna is made with ricotta cheese sometimes and just different dishes. It comes in little containers. You can get whole milk, you can get part skim, and you can get uh, fat-free, whatever you want. I'm using a fat-free today. That's about a 14-ounce container. You can use anywhere from, you know, eight. I'm making basically a two cup serving, but you could cut it in half if you wanted to, if it's just a couple of you. But that was a 14 ounce container of ricotta. I have half a cup of half and half. You could, if you're not watching calories, you could use heavy cream and it would even be more decadent and delicious. But, you know, we're trying to cut some calories here. So I'm using half and half, half a cup, about a teaspoon of good vanilla. And I'm, you know, I'm funny about vanilla. Some people don't mind using the imitation vanilla. I think there's a world of difference in the flavor. I always use real, pure vanilla. I get asked that a lot, is there a difference? Yes, absolutely, there is a difference. Real vanilla is made with vanilla beans and, and, and they extract it. The imitation vanilla is made with chemicals and, and I just really don't like the imitation. So do use the real vanilla in your baking or whatever you're using the vanilla in. And that was half a cup of just powdered sugar. Always you want to put just a pinch of salt because that brings out flavors. A lot of people don't realize, but salt you use in every application that you're cooking because it brings out the flavors of other things. And then just use a hand mixture on low and just stir that all together. It will be creamy. Once you get it kind of started, turn your mixer up a little bit. Be creamy and delicious. You can use this for so many different things. You can, uh, I'm doing parfaits today, but if you wanted to use this as a base in lasagna, leave out the vanilla, there you go, and leave out the vanilla and the uh, powdered sugar, and just use ricotta and the half and half, and there you go, you got your mixture for your lasagna. You can use this format of the, the uh, mixture with the cheese and the powdered sugar vanilla and all that and just mix it with your cereal. Now Mike, my husband, really likes yogurt. And what he will do oftentimes in the morning is just take a container of yogurt and put granola in it. But you can do that with this mixture. And it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. And you just wanna, as you can see, I'm just kinda whipping it here just to get it all blended and incorporated. And that's it, there's your sauce your base for your granola parfait. Now, you can use whatever kind of fruit and whatever kind of granola you like. I just chose today, because they looked beautiful, berries. I've got some gorgeous, look at the size of these blackberries. They're just gorgeous and they're big and juicy and mm, so good. And raspberries, because raspberries are my favorite, uh, and they looked beautiful today. So, but you could use strawberries, you could use kiwi, you could use pineapple, you could use peaches, you could use apples, you could do any kind of fruit that you like. And anyone that's ever watched this program knows I really try to incorporate a lot of fruit into desserts and into breakfast meals because that's a great way to get more fruit in your diet, and it's healthier and it just, it's so much better for you to incorporate it in with other things that you may like in your children. That's a good way to get your children to eat more fruit. I just have these cute little uh, parfait glasses, but you can use bowls, you can use whatever you have. Doesn't have to be these little parfait glasses, but we had them, so we, we're just using them here. Now, 
I chose, whoops, spilled my granola here. I've got just a granola mixture. You can find this in your cereal aisle of your grocery store. Some grocery stores in the health food section will have just different kinds of granola. Some have dried fruit in it, some don't. There's just literally hundreds of different kinds of granola. You choose whatever kind you like. This particular blend is just oats and honey and yummy, absolutely scrumptious. Doesn't have any nuts in it. So if you've got someone uh, with a nut allergy, perfect thing. Just make sure you read on there. We actually do here. Uh, here at Living Faith, we have uh, someone that has a nut allergy, so I try to be real careful there. But just choose whatever kind of granola your family likes. Take just a spoonful, find a spoon, a spoonful of your ricotta mixture and put in the bottom of your parfait glasses. And this will make, I don't know, four to six parfaits, depending on how big you make them, you're layering it. And the reason that I like to do in the glass is that you can see the different layers. And I'm a firm believer. You eat with your eyes first. And if you think something is beautiful, it tells your, your, your taste buds will read your mind and think, oh, how good that is. Add some berries, whatever kind you're using. Do a mixture if you want to. And I believe I will. I love berries. Eat them quite often. Just put you some berries in your, in there. Or you can just do one or the other, whatever you like. Whatever your family wants. But make it pretty. You know, mornings sometimes can be rough. It is for me, I'm not a morning person. So mornings, you know, and if you've got something really pretty in front of you, it just starts your day out, right? Take a little bit of your granola, put in there. This also would be a great dessert after dinner. It doesn't have to be breakfast. Just because it has cereal in it doesn't mean it has to be breakfast. Put a little bit of granola here. Just a little bit, crunch. We all like crunchy things. And then put a little more of your ricotta cheese mixture in there. And just repeat the layering. That's what you're doing here. It's just repeating the layers. Yeah. You could use yogurt if you wanted to. Instead of this mixture, you could use uh, yogurt, whatever kind of yogurt you like. A few more berries in there. Mmm, these raspberries smell good. I love raspberries. Oops, about to leave this guy out. Don't want to do that, do we? And some blackberries. I want you to look at these gorgeous, gorgeous blackberries. They're so pretty. Mmm. Yum, yum. And top it with some granola. And there's a quick, easy, fast breakfast, healthy, that you can serve your family any day of the week. I'm gonna take a quick break, and when I come back, we're gonna make another easy thing that's one of my favorites, and that's just an egg and Canadian bacon muffin. We'll be right back with you in just a minute. chapter 23 verse 1 says the Lord is my shepherd friends this speaks security in our life if you are a child of God then he is your shepherd what does a shepherd do a shepherd keeps his flock safe they go out and gather when one is lost they keep them protected from the animals and things of nature. Well, God is your shepherd. The Bible tells us that he is our protector. He is our defender. He is our provider. The Lord is truly our shepherd. Are you a child of his? Do you belong to him? If so, then you can rest assured in his arms and in his care that he will truly take care of you.
and welcome back. Now, we made our granola parfaits. We used ricotta cheese and some powdered sugar and a little bit of uh, vanilla, and we just whipped all that together, a little bit of half and half, and we made like this little sauce type thing, and we used some beautiful fresh berries and just some granola. You can use any kind of granola that you like and just layered. We're gonna do quick, easy, fast breakfast today. Now, one of my favorite things in life, it's a guilty pleasure, I know it, but I love them, are scones. And I, you know, can make scones, and we've done them on the program before, but often I will stop by this little bakery, one of my favorite bakeries uh, that, that I go to, and they make delicious scones. Listen, you don't have to buy or don't have to make everything from scratch. You can buy some things and have in your home. My son, Austin, that helps me cook on here, this particular bakery makes this one scone. We're going to do a version of that kind of thing on the program, a white chocolate and raspberry scone that is just simply divine, and he loves them. So for him, I bought some white chocolate and raspberry scones. I've got, this one is a, this one right here is a beautiful blueberry scone. And these are some cranberry and orange scones. Those are just the flavors that I chose because my bakery has them. If you don't have access to a bakery that has beautiful pastries like that, you could use uh, bagels and do this very thing that we're gonna, the, the cheese or the butter sauce that we're gonna make and put over. You could use bagels, you could use toast, you could use any kind of pastry that you can find that your family likes. In the grocery stores today, the, the bread section, I am amazed. I just look at all the different kinds of bread. You could take this butter mixture that we're gonna make and spread it over a whole wheat tortilla and just wrap it up and have, you know, just have that kind of thing. Get the fiber, get the whole wheat, get the grains into your diet. That's the point. Or you can do what I do and buy some scones. I don't know how much fiber's in those, but they sure are good. And just use those. I warm mine in the oven or the microwave for about 10 seconds with a cup of coffee. Perfect. But to slather on those scones or bagels or whatever you're choosing, we're going to make some butter. I make all kinds of compound butters. We've done several different ones on uh, this program, but you know, it's just the possibilities are limitless. And this is one of those things that you can make in advance, butters, and store them in your refrigerator for a couple of weeks, or you can freeze them and just pull them out as you need it, you know, the night before, or, or slice off a piece of it out of your freezer, put the rest of it back in there. It'll keep probably six months or so in your freezer. So you can do this part ahead. And that's what we're doing today. We're doing things that we can cook ahead and get, you know, our morning off to a good start without having to spend a lot of time that we don't have in the mornings. To my butter, always I use unsalted butter, always. So this doesn't have any salt in it. You always need to add just a pinch because it brings out the flavors. I always buy unsalted butter. I think it tastes better, and then I can control the amount of sodium that's in my diet. So one stick of unsalted butter. I have some cinnamon here. Use as much as you like. Um, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon is good. I really like things cinnamony, if that's a word. I really do like the flavor of cinnamon. So I use a little more, but you use however much you like, and honey. We're gonna put some honey, one of my favorite ingredients, love honey. I went recently, uh, Abingdon has a festival every year where we are and I went down to the festival and there was a little vendor there that was selling their, their they farm bees, raise bees, keep bees, whatever you call it. And about, I don't know, three or four tablespoons of honey, however much you like, works, whatever works for you. This, this doesn't have to be exact. But anyway, this particular vendor raises bees, keeps bees, and they make honey, and they have all kinds of flavors of honey. And yes, there is a difference in the taste of honey, depending on if you've ever seen orange blossom honey, buckwheat honey, clover honey, different types of honey in your store, whatever kind of flowers that the bees have access to, that's what flavors the honey. She had thistles, she had all kinds of different things. And, and I just said, can I taste them? 
to see which one I like the best. World of difference in the in the different, just the, the, the nuances of the, the honey just tastes so different. So try different kinds of honey. That's just plain, you know, different, you know, honey that you get in the little bears at the store. But if you can find, and it's really easy to nowadays, if you can find the different flavors of honey, do. Now, we're just making a simple cinnamon honey butter right here. See what I'm doing? I'm just simply taking that butter. It wasn't quite soft enough, but it'll work. Leave it out for a couple of hours overnight even if you want to. And incorporate the honey and cinnamon into the butter. I also, what is delicious over these scones is a citrus butter. Take the same thing, a stick of butter softened pinch of salt and the zest from like an orange, the orange cranberry with the orange butter would be phenomenal. Zest and orange and maybe just use a, a teaspoon or so of the juice if you want to. You don't even need the juice and mix all that together. Do the same thing. You could do anything you like. This right here is scrumptious over a piece of toast. So there's just butter and that's what we're going to use to go over our scones. Of course, they're delicious on their own. You don't really even need the butter, but you know, I, I kind of have this philosophy that I think everything tastes better with butter. I love it. And I like real butter, even though, you know, I, I, uh, at this moment, you know, my husband is, we're, we're watching what he eats, but I would rather have a little bit less butter and use the real thing. I do like real butter. I just, I'm not a big fan of the artificial stuff. I'd rather just eat this and have the real thing. But if you can't for health reasons, use whatever you like. And there you go. There's just a simple little compound butter that you can make the night before, the day before, a week before, whatever you want to do. And then serve with your favorite pastries, whatever kind of pastry that you like. We're just doing scones today. I'm gonna take a quick break. When I come back, we're gonna make our egg and Canadian bacon and cheese muffins. We'll be right back in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. Now we've got our scones with our butter ready. We've got our parfaits. Those are just two different options for breakfast. We're going to make a, a Canadian bacon and egg and cheese, if you like, muffin. Now, you could pull through a drive through if that's what you want to do. And hey, I'm not saying we never do that. We do. But this is a much healthier alternative for your family. It takes literally a minute or two to prepare and then, you know, here you go. You can grab it and go out the door. Now, these are English muffins. You've, uh, you've seen them in the store. Let me show you how they come packaged. They just come in the little boxes just like this that you, that you get at the store. You've all seen these in the grocery store. And here's what they look like. They're just little disks of bread, basically, uh, with lots of little holes in there. I don't know how they make them exactly. But anyway, they're delicious. But you do need to cut them apart. Usually, they come six to a package. Be careful and just cut them in two. And if you want them warmed, I'm going to do mine in an oven. You can warm them in the oven or you can toast them in a toaster, whatever you like. But just split them. You don't have to warm them if you don't want to. You can eat them just plain. Now, I did put mine on a little rack. I just kind of raise them up off the baking sheet so the bottoms don't get overdone. I've got my oven preheated to 450 degrees. I'm just going to put them in there for about two minutes just to kind of warm them through. They're delicious with orange marmalade. Traditionally, that's what the English eat with their English muffins is orange marmalade or butter or whatever you want. But one of my favorite ways to have them is with Canadian bacon and eggs. Now, let's talk just a moment about Canadian bacon. It's becoming so available now, and this is what it is. It looks like and tastes like just a little round of ham. And that's sort of what it is. It isn't like your traditional bacon where it has lots of fat 
and that kind of thing. It's extremely lean, extremely healthy, and it's just a very lean ham product. It is delicious. All you need to do really is just warm it through in a skillet for just a, about literally 15 seconds on each side and boom, it's done. It's already cooked. You just, I like mine warm. You could eat it just like that, but I do like it warmed up. I've got a large skillet here. I'm doing just a non-stick skillet to do my eggs. Now, you can eat this with or without eggs. I have an issue with my health with cholesterol, so I don't eat as many egg yolks as some may do. You know, you may want to use whole eggs and you may want to just use egg whites. Today, I'm just going to use egg whites because that's what I like. But if you like whole eggs, and make just make scrambled eggs. If you're going to do the whole egg, just put, for four people, I would put like six eggs. Uh, I think you need a couple of extra little things in there. Uh, just the whole egg, a couple of teaspoons or so of milk or half and half, whatever you have. Beat that together with salt and pepper and just make soft scrambled eggs. But today, I'm just gonna make the egg whites because that's, for me, what I like. And if you get a little bit of yolk in there, that's okay, and I did. We've all done it. My mother is sitting at home going, then break that over a different bowl. <laughs> I know what you're saying, Mom, but it's okay. I like the yolk, I just don't eat as much. But if you want the whole egg, that's perfectly fine. Don't buy those little Gidget Gasmos that separate eggs. Just do what I'm doing. If you've never, if you don't know how to separate an egg, crack it. I don't crack mine on the side of a bowl because that drives the shells up in there. Crack it on a flat surface. Break it in half. Put the yolk on one side. And just go gently back and forth. And the yolk will separate from the white. And that's, it's, it's thicker sometimes. You gotta kinda help it along a little bit. That was what, three? Let's do, I'll do five. Whoops. Okay, we got a little shell in there. That's okay. You've done that too. Just take a spoon and fish it out. Or you can use the other half of an eggshell. Did you know that? It acts kind of like a magnet and it will get, it, the eggshell will attract the eggshell. And I really got him in there today. Come on you, there we go. There we go, now he's out. Let's do one more while our pan is heating up. I don't like to cook eggs over really, really high heat. I use like medium. I think it makes them tough if you cook them over really, really high heat. And that's enough for right now. You can make these customized to your family. I add a little bit of salt. Because I'm using the whites only, I'm not putting any half and half or milk or anything in there. Lots of pepper. I like pepper. If you've ever watched this show, you know that I like pepper. My dad teases, says I like, you like pepper, don't you? Said, yeah, I do. I really do like pepper. But I do pick that up just a little bit to kind of start breaking the yolks. Just a little bit. Not, not any great big deal, just a little bit of that. Pan is warm. I'm using nonstick spray. I always do, even if I'm using a nonstick skillet. And for me, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. I just do the same thing as if I were making scrambled eggs. It just takes a second to cook the eggs while they're setting. Let's check on our muffins. They should be about warm. I just want to warm them through. If you want to toast yours in the toaster, you can. I just really don't care for that. I like mine better just plain warmed through. I like my scones warmed. I like my bagels warmed. Mike toasts his bagels and I don't. I put mine in the microwave for just a second or two just to kind of get, get it warm. But if you like it toasted, by all means toast. Let's check on the, yeah, they're perfect. They're good, they're warmed. That's all I wanted to do was just warm them. Let's grab a little trivet here. 
and put those down. And eggs are basically good. Get those kind of going to the side to finish cooking through. And then take your Canadian bacon and just put it on the other side of your skillet for literally, literally just a few seconds and that's all you need to do. While those are warming, and that's it, friends. If you want a little cheese, you can add a little cheese to your egg. The Canadian bacon, I promise, it cooks that quick. It's really easy. All right, let's get our plate together. Get a top and a bottom. I'll make two. Add some egg to it. Now, how easy is this? How quick is this? And a slice of Canadian bacon. If you want to sprinkle some cheddar cheese on top, there you go. You can grab that and go out the door. It's much healthier and better for you and less expensive than the drive through Thank you for joining with me today. Try these recipes on your family, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manners.